the time has come, Monday, March 4th, 2019, uh, for Waukegan's regular city council meeting. Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Present. Alderman Newsom. Alderman Tempest. Present. Alderman May. Present. Alderman Velko. Present. Alderman Taylor. Present. Alderman Bolton. Present. Alderman Seeger. Present. Alderman Mosio. Here. Mayor Cunningham. Present. Uh, invocation will be led by Pastor George Vanilla of Church in Waukegan. And immediately following that will be David uh, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pastor. All rise, please. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. We can come here and gather at this council city meeting. Lord, we can call you God, and we also can call you Father. We are so thankful to you because you came to this earth him a man to dwell among us so you understand our daily living. You know how we live, our troubles, our difficulties, and everything related to our life. We are so thankful that you live now inside of us. Our prayer is regarding this town, regarding this uh, leadership, regarding everyone who is present here. Lord, we ask you to lead us tonight. Be merciful to all of us. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 David? Right there. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor's comments. Again, e uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Waukegan City Council. At the last council meeting, the city uh, indicated our desire to pursue air testing. Since then, I want to provide the community an update on our progress in the past two weeks. At the meeting with local, county, and state officials, the municipalities have verbally agreed to split funding for testing with the county with the county and the county health department has agreed to take lead in drafting an RFP slash RFQ for air testing. The county has begun requesting technical details from the EPA, specifically quality assurance plan in the ethylene oxide monitoring methodologies in order to draft the bid document. While the RFP slash RFQ process in the procurement and appropriation processes take place in approximately next, will take place in the next 90 days. We hope to see air testing begin in May. Once we have test results, the ATSDR, Agency for Toxic Substance and Disease Registry, has indicated willingness to provide analysis and a risk assessment. We continue to push the state and federal government to take ownership of this testing process. However, we will not accept no action occurring and we continue to appreciate the community's commitment to this issue. City stickers. City stickers are on sale. A reminder the City Hall will even be open on Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon on March 23rd, March 30th and April and in April on April the 20th and April the 27th. Fire Department retirements. Waukegan Fire Department and the city recognizes the retirement of six firemen during a celebration this past week. David Erdahl, Dave Rigney, Mike Shally, Shally, Dave Pat, Mr. John Nordigan, and Timothy McCarthy were all honored. On behalf of all the city of Waukegan, uh, the aldermen, we thank those gentlemen and their families for their service to our great community. Upcoming events. Joining Waukegan Township for an HBCU, Historically Black College and University, to a fundraiser at the Genesee Theater. Enjoy live entertainment, hors d'oeuvres, on Wednesday, March 6th, starting at 5 p.m. 
The Genesee Theater preaches 80s and 90s music at Hairball on Friday, the, the 8th, then, then hosts Disney Junior Dance Party on the 9th, and comedian Jim Brewer on the 15th. While kicking Main Street Mardi Gras fundraiser is Saturday, March the 9th, at Glenfora Country Club, enjoy Cajun-inspired food, live music, games, and signing auction. The Waukegan High School Athletic Booster Club's auction is also Saturday night, March the 9th, uh, at the Arches Banquet Hall. That's the old Lake Oakwood, right, Ray? Oakwood Racquet Club, I think. Is that correct? Yeah. All right, that's the old Oak, Oakwood Racquet Club. Uh, off right off, uh, Gen it's off Grand Avenue. And, uh, I'm gonna give some people by the old Nissan dealership, now Lake County, Lake County Sales. For those who don't know, the auction celebrates and supports Waukegan High School athletics programs. Illinois Reads kickoff event is at Waukegan High School and features 40 Illinois authors with a special nod to Waukegan's own Ray Bradbury. The event challenges families to read together and have a special program with without the uh, without the year the AL8 the ALATS dance winter show the invitation is Saturday March the 16th with shows at 3:30 p.m. and 6:30 and now we have a Waukegan Proud award i'm going to ask Mr. David Motley to come on up for this exceptional young man who's doing great things in Waukegan David So again, Mayor, you ask me on a regular basis to try to identify young people within the community that are making a difference and also calling Waukegan home and being proud about it, thus the name Waukegan Proud Award. So tonight we're recognizing uh, young David Fajardo Jr. who led the pledge this evening. David, if you wanna come on up here. Uh, David uh, is a very young person, but he is being recognized for his outstanding achievement uh, for his designation as Mr. Olympic, strike a pose, and for receiving the Silver Gloves designation, representing the DBB Boxing Club here in Waukegan. So he's a boxer, he's a wrestler, wrestler. and yes, Alderman Tempest, so come, take him on if you'd like to. In addition to that, I know that he's also a fine soccer player for Heart of the City. So our elite team. So that being said, Mayor, come down and shake his hand. And he's a champion, Larry. So you better check the second another champion's hand. Make sure he wears his head here, Ray. Mom and Dad, come on over. I know you're going to take this picture. Congratulations to you. As David said, uh, we often uh, don't honor our young men and young ladies who are doing the things that we want them to do in the city of Waukegan. A lot of times the headlines always read about some of the negative things that a lot of our young people are doing. But for those who are doing what mom and dad asked them to do, they're leading the teachers, and then excelling in, that, in, in athletics, we need to let them know we appreciate them and we are proud of them. That's why when we have young men and young ladies or people doing things who highlight and promote the city of Waukegan, we want to recognize them. And today, sir, you're the one who's being recognized for your outstanding achievement. And as they read earlier, uh, it is his recognition of, of your outstanding achievement that Mr. Olympic and for receiving the silver gloves designation representing the DBB Boxing Club in Waukegan. So congratulations to you, sir. Happy for you, proud of you. not just myself, it's all of us on here. So we all take a group picture with you, okay? Mom and Dad, are you, are you already ready? Now, first of all, we look at Jane first, all right? Here. 
who's been supporting me throughout my whole whole life while I have um, going down and going up. It's all right. Say thank you to my parents and I like to, I'd like to help my nephew. He he is an outstanding student, a great wrestler, a great boxer, always listens to mom and dad, stays away from all the bad things, always does the right thing. And um, he'll learn first time coming up, a little nervous, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And he'll keep making the walking and proud, I guarantee you that. Thanks. Thank you, young man. That's all right, sir. Great. Yeah. Mayor, can I say a word? Sure, you, please? sure. Yeah. All the Mavia Lobos. Um, I haven't met David. I, I don't know David Fajardo, but I do know his uncle, Rene Diaz, one of our firefighters. Uh, he was a wrestler with me. You guys may not always remember, but I also wrestled too. I didn't get the accolades as Alderman Tempest, but I was a wrestler, so I feel part of that uh, brotherhood. Um, also, I'd like to note too that uh, Mr. Justin Foster is here, who uh, runs the gym and helps with our youth here in Waukegan. Um, my parents actually live across the street from the gym, so I would see them sometimes doing wind sprints down the sidewalks, um, just running around the community and getting them engaged that way too. So I also want to thank you, uh, Justin Foster, for I have your doors open for our youth here in Waukegan and um, training young men like, Mr. like David over here for Hardo um, and showing them that there's just ways to achieve things um, and pushing yourself. Um, Sports were very important in my life growing up, and so um, I'm glad to see. And then I, I love the shirt made on Cory Avenue. Um, I might have to buy one of those now. Um, so yeah, again, thank you and congratulations, David. You know, wish you the best in everything, in the boxing, the sports, everything. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, here we go. Well, item two, uh, a motion by number 10 for a second by Alderman Via Lobos to approve the regular meeting minutes from Tuesday, February 19, 2019. Any questions to the motion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed and carried. Item B, motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Mozio to approve the committee of the whole meeting minutes from Tuesday, February 19, 2019. Any questions to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed and carried. Item three, Madam Clerk, audience time. Audience time, okay. We're gonna give this a start. And first up, first up, we have Mr. Ed Nero. You have three minutes, sir. Good afternoon. Um, when I got up this morning, I had no idea I'd be standing here. My routine on Monday is simple. The restaurant is closed. I get up at four, I have a delivery at five, I clean, I prep, I get ready for the next day. But it's been on my heart, it's been in my mind for a long time, the amount of discord that's going on at these meetings. It's on social media, it's everywhere. And I've always been taught, you see something, you should say something. I'm in my own little world by myself. 
I'm not affiliated with any group. I don't do politics. But our kids are watching. The whole world is watching how we are attacking each other. Waukegan is so much better than this. I don't have a dog in this fight, but what I would like to do is I would like to invite you, the mayor, and some of your most toughest critics to let's sit down and talk away from the cameras. We're not going to live stream it on social media. Let's get together and talk like men and women do. Everybody is not right. Somebody has to be able to get together to sit down and say, how do we bridge the gap from what's going on here? I feel bad if this gentleman, this young man who got the accolades just now to know that this is how the city is really working with the name calling and the fighting and the this. Again, I got no dog in this fight. I had no idea that I was going to be here. But just like the people who are passionate about their causes, I am passionate about this city as well. I'm originally from the south side of Chicago. So I miss a lot of the things that have happened in Waukegan. I sell barbecue, that's it. And not everybody likes my food and that's okay. They have a right to express themselves. But in, our, in the restaurant, my message is simple. If you like it, tell everybody you know. If you don't like it, tell me because I can fix it. You have a better chance sitting down telling me what you don't like and we can work on fixing it so that we can move forward. Next Monday, my routine will still be the same. But what I would like to do different is again, for you, Mr. Mayor, and to the people who have issue with the way that you're leading, let's get together at my restaurant. Thank you, Mr. Talk. Nero. Thank you. John Gasco. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, honorable mayor, esteemed aldermen, and elected officials. I just wanted to come up. I'm, my name is Jonathan Gaskill. I'm the assistant director at the Waukegan Public Library. We've made an effort to come to these meetings to not only spread the word about the public library in Waukegan because it is a jewel uh, tucked in there on County and Clayton streets. Uh, it is a great place. I've only been there eight months now. And it's one of my favorite libraries so far in my entire library career of 10 years. I just wanted to bring up a couple of positive things, one of which is it's pretty cold outside, but I'm not going to talk about the cold. I'm going to talk about the summer. We're getting ready and are in ramping up our preparations for the summer reading program at the library. Start around June 8th or so and run through the month of June and July all the way to early August. It's helped to uh, reduce the summer slump that young people have a tendency to uh, partake in over the summer. We read a lot during the, the school year, of course, but it's important to continue reading throughout the year, even when you're not required to, including fun things like uh, magazines, graphic novels, and the like. The library has plenty of those for everyone. So the summer reading program, I want to talk about summer and preparation for fun, positive things happening at the library. I also wanted to read a couple of quotes, one of which is, a library is not a luxury, but one of the necessities of life. Henry Ward Beecher, and last but certainly not least, I discovered me in the library. I went to find me in the library. That's Ray Bradbury. Thank you very much for being so positive. And uh, I'll. Thank you, Scott Repia. Repia. Scott Repia, Walking in Firefighters, Support Seven Three, of uh, International Association of Firefighters. <clears throat> we come before you tonight to address a long-standing issue of public concerns and to refute the claims made by your labor attorney at the last council meeting. Uh, for years, the city has chosen to understaff its fire department. It has decided that large portions of our community do not deserve the same level of fire protection that other portions receive. The fact is the city, city regularly operates two of its five fire stations with half the number of firefighters needed. 
uh, for five years. But for years, the city has done such a great job of hiding this fact that even some of its elected officials haven't have apparently been unaware of it. This practice of understaffing may have worked when the fire department ran about 8,000 yes, calls a year, but it has no business continuing now that we are over 11,000 calls a year. Um, your labor attorney attempt to portray this increased call volume as insignificant speaks volumes to his ignorance of the fire service. The fact is, our increased call volume is the equivalent of many other area fire departments call volume for the entire year. To think that we can sustain quality services with this increased call volume and no reciprocal increase in our staffing model is naive as fast. But the city council has already recognized this understaffing issue back in 2005 when it went before the residents and approved a property tax increase for the purpose of fully staffing all of our fire stations. And to the city's credit, it did hire more firefighters, but it never put in place measures to ensure all the fire stations would be fully staffed every day. So we continue to regularly run understaffed, which persists to this day. Your labor attorney and perhaps others would like you to believe that to fix this problem, we would need to hire 12 more firefighters at a cost of $1.8 million annually. But in simply making such claims, they show complete ignorance of the current staffing situation at the fire department. They know that we currently operate with a daily minimum of 25 firefighters and that the number to fully staff all the fire stations is 29. So they deduced that they would need to hire four more firefighters for each of the three ships in order to meet that. So four times three is 12. So I guess we'll need 12 more firefighters. This is the farthest, farthest thing from the truth. In fact, the department's budget already calls for the minimum number of firefighters needed to fully staff every day minus one single firefighter position. Uh, we can do a handout that details this fact. With the staffing we are already budgeted for, we should only need to fill spots when firefighters are hurt, sick, or outside training, um, outside the city training, which would cost somewhere between $50,000 and $350,000 annually. This would not be a temporary solution as some want you to believe. Even more to help offset this cost, the firefighters have even made a proposal to help cut this cost in half. What other city employees have offered to do something like that to improve the services they've provided? That's how much appropriately staffing the fire department means to the firefighters here in Waukegan. Thank you. Mike Pellegrino. Mike Pellegrino, Local 473. I'm going to pick up where Scott left off. Uh, this is the type of mentality that should be commended and emulated. Yet we are met with rebuke from the city. The city's actions over the years have made it clear that unless forced to by law or by the contract to fully staff its fire stations, that it is content to operate the, full, the fire department understaffed. If that was the case, this issue would have already been fixed. The fact that the city regularly doesn't fill the fire department vacancies in a timely manner, and as recently as 2016 only allocated the fire department with $28,000 in its overtime budget, when other departments of uh, similar size had an overtime budget of close to $1 million. It clearly demonstrates that staffing the fire department has not been a priority. As a representative of the Waukegan Firefighters Union, we don't place the blame solely on the current council. The blame for the situation spans many years and the finger can be pointed in many different directions. But you are the ones who have the opportunity to fix this issue right now. If you choose not to, then you will be as complicit as others. And if you were prerogative, so be it, but be open and honest with the citizens and with the firefighters and tell them that the fire department is not a priority for the city and that equal and adequate fire protection for all residents is not a necessity. And certainly, don't blame an action or ridiculously inflated cost projections that clearly have no basis in fact or logic. It's time to fix the problem. It's time for 28. You want to enter that in? I'm sorry? You want to enter those comments in for? Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. Right. You're talking about the numbers? No, no, no. no, no. We, the whole state. Name and address. Hmm? Your name and address. You usually hear that. Your name and address. Your name and address. Fire Fighters Local. 473. Address. Do you want to give us his address? No, he doesn't have to. Okay. Celeste Flores. And we have to give address. We don't want to give. Nope. Evening, Council. Um, I'm here to thankful. Thank you, Mayor, for those updates. I'm 
really hoping that May is when we can start uh, the air testing, but I'm here to actually invite the whole council. So with Faith in Place, we empower people of all faith to advocate for healthier communities. And one of the things we saw a need in Chicago was that we always encourage our, our members to go to farmer's markets, um, but there was a lack of that fresh fruits and vegetables and everything else in the winter time. So we applied for a grant to start the winter farmer's market. And last year was the first year we were able to bring it up here to Lake County, and it's gonna be back on April 6th. It's gonna be in Gurney at the Annunciation of Our Lady Episcopal Church, so I'll send this around to you guys. But the great thing about this is that if you know anyone that's looking for fresh local food, this is the place to go, and we have a link match. So anyone that has link or snap can come and double their purchase. Um, so it's a great opportunity to get the community out, to really think about where your food comes from, sustainability, and just wanted to let you guys know about this event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dylan Burdett. Um, thanks for uh, letting me speak to you today. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, thank you so much for being so responsive to the calls of your concerned residents. Um, like pretty much everybody else here, I was very disappointed in the failure of the state and the federal EPA to step in and, and conduct air testing. And I'm very thankful that the municipalities and the county have stepped up uh, where the higher governments have failed us. At this point, I gotta say I'm very proud of Waukegan, and I would urge you uh, to keep checking in, or I, that we will keep checking in with you, and I urge you uh, and your office to put out regular updates along with the county uh, as we move forward in the air testing, and we decide, once we finally have some data, what we should do about the issue of ethylene oxide in our air. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Anthony George. So I recently just uh, was made aware of, of this uh, ethylene oxide uh, issue by my colleague who is also a physician, <laughs> an emergency physician. So I'm so happy and thankful that uh, you guys have taken up this um, air testing so quick. And uh, we all thank you from Green Oaks. We live in Green Oaks, pretty close to this facility. And we are very thankful that you're going to be doing something about it so that we can finally make sure that we are not getting affected by this uh, toxic uh, gas, if at all, if it is uh, causing issues to us. So thank you again for making this happen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Dr. Saeed Karim. Thank you very much for showing us what leadership is about. Nobody else has done that yet. Um, of course, the devil is in the details, and I just want to stress that if you can please make sure that the testing is independent without any interest of the vested parties, and you will continue to push the state to come in, or well, the US EPA to come and do their own testing, because without that, I think ultimately there's the last word. But thank you very much for showing us what leadership is about. <coughs> Thank you. Dr. Elvia Moyd? As she's coming in, just to be clear, that was one of the things that we talked about amongst the three communities was independent testing, okay? All right, so everybody be clear on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Honorable Mayor and Alderman. Ma yeah, there you go. Oh, sorry. Thanks. Thank you so much for your time, Honorable Mayor and Honorable Alderman. We really <coughs> appreciate your concern regarding the ethylene oxide toxic gas issue. Uh, we're a part of a group of concerned physicians of Lake County. We're very concerned because we see toxic effects on our patients. Um, thank you for sharing our concern about the health of Lake County residents, and we're very happy to see that efforts are moving forward. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Sir Kareem. All right, and as she's coming up, I meant to mention this earlier, everyone. Uh, today there was, come on up, young lady, you're all right. Uh, there was a, a, a major fire at Washington, 901 Grand Avenue. Uh, that fire last started about 3.30, probably ended it roughly, well, it hasn't ended yet, to be honest. But uh, because of the, the magnitude of the fire, we are demo, uh, demolishing that particular building as we speak 
right now. Uh, uh, so if you see anyone at Grand and Jackson, you're going to see some activities over there because uh, it, had to, it had to come down. It was a major safety hazard, and there was some outages earlier, but we had to do that for fire, <laughs> fire, fire to safety. So I want to thank those guys there, but more importantly, that building is coming down. I'm sorry to interrupt you, man, but I need to get that out. And thank you, Vin. You brought the mic down. You must be experienced at this. <laughs> All right, here we go. Go ahead, young lady. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for getting the testing, and it really helped me breathe easier. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Susan Henning. Good evening, Mayor Cunningham. Hello, city council members. I just want to thank you again for allowing public comments. You may remember I was here two weeks ago. I'm from Gurney. I am so excited to hear your update and your news. Thank you so much for taking this ethylene oxide issue seriously. Um, I hope Gurney is one of the municipalities that is working with you. And it is. OK, wonderful. And I would just like to say, please stick to a timeline, because we know in any project, we need a timeline. So hopefully May will stick. And I'm very excited and very thankful to you. Thank you. Thank you. David Fajardo? David Fajardo? He, he, he was with, yeah. okay. Dr. Uh, Sadiq Ahmed? Hello, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Alderman. Uh, I'm one of the physicians in this clinic, in this uh, community. I work for the Lake County Health Department before. I'm working for the North Shore Health System, so I work with the patients, so I'm a family physician. So as a family physician, you can see my concern because I deal with patients day in and day out. So I'm really happy that we're doing the right direction. I really support you guys and hope we do the right thing for the patients. Thank you. Thank you. Sal Tanaka. Mayor and Alderman, uh, my name is So, I'm from Grace Lake. I just want to say thank you for uh, bringing up the ETO air testing at the very first meet meeting, our very first part of the meeting. And uh, not only bringing up, but recognizing the effort that the community is making. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, it shows that you understand the importance of air testing. And uh, you mentioned about uh, this is the different villages, municipalities got together and talked about it. In last Friday, the news broke out that uh, EPA, you know, EPA is not going to do the testing. And in their, um, Gurney May was mentioning about using the method that Vintage is using is one of the options. So to me, that's not independent. So. There will be a lot of different things, ways to do it, but I just want to emphasize once again, I know everybody's talking about it. You heard it 100 times, but I just want to emphasize independent, not trying to copy what Vantage is doing or what Medline is doing, or what really independent testing. And uh, also on social media, somebody's talking about uh, um, have Medline, Vantage pay for it, put it in escrow, use that money, something like that. It's just not going to be, it just doesn't work. So I just want to emphasize again, independence. Thank you. Thank you. Dot Barclay. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council, and thank you for allowing me to speak. I had an encounter on the 25th of uh, February, whereas I had a, a, dope, uh, a, a pit bull hound dog that I could no longer maintain. The dog weighed about 90 pounds, and I have been diagnosed with a bad hip, and the dog was just a bit much for me. So I went to the animal control, which was told by me by the Waukegan police to surrender the dog. And when I got to the animal control, they treated me so terribly. They said to me that 
We don't want to take your dog. We don't want to take your dog. We uh, only have one alternative for you, and that is that we want you to take your dog so many miles to a couple of towns out of Waukegan and surrender your dog to them, and they will euthanize your dog, and then their words were, then you want to bring the dead body back to us. So terribly insensitive. I couldn't believe that me being so proud of Waukegan, a proud resident homeowner of Waukegan, being treated so, so terribly. So I just wanted the city council to know that I think that people in public positions, which I have done for 39 years, worked in the medical field for that length of time, it's so very important for us to be sensitive to other people's needs. I'm a senior citizen, been diagnosed with a bad hip, wanted to surrender a 90 pound dog, and was treated like I was nothing and was told that in order to have this done, you have to pay $160, take the dog a few towns away, have the dog brought back to us, but you bring the dog back dead. So I just wanted to speak on that and to see if someone could at least, and then I was given a ticket to pay. I told them I couldn't afford $160, so they said, well, you need to pay $25 to the city of Waukegan for, I don't know for what reason or another, but. I just felt that I needed to bring that to the attention of the council and to my alderman on my behalf. If you guys could please speak with the animal control people to let them know that sometimes sensitivity is very important. Thank you. Do me a favor, ma'am. Yes. Talk to our chief before you leave, okay? Yes. The chief, the chief. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I will. And I don't know what to do with this, if this is something I need to turn into you, uh, Mr. Mayor, or? I, I, I don't know what it is. Why don't you just talk to the chief, and let's see if we can. And who is the chief? Uh, chief, chief is in the back. I'll and be happy to, you know, nice. thank you. You know me. Why don't you just give me a call? I know, but I know you're very busy, Mr. Mayor, don't you know. Don't worry about it. Just see the chief, okay? Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. It's nice seeing you. Sarah Thanks, Crawford. Hello, my name is Sarah Crawford and I also live in Gurney. We just wanted to thank you so much, everyone, for following through with the independent ear testing. I'm absolutely thrilled and elated that I know that this is happening and that we are protecting our families. Um, and I just also wanted to echo Susan and say, please, please keep us updated. We're craving and hungry for information about this and we just want to know that this is gonna happen and that there is going to be a timeline that's gonna be put out there to the public. Um, and I just want to thank you again so much. Thank you. Okay. Tracy Adams. And for those who out there speaking for this subject or any subject, if you have a, some notes or you have a, you're reading, if you want to leave those so they be entered into the record, that's, you can do so before you leave, all right? So I want to let, throw that out there to everybody. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Tracy, and uh, a lot of you know that I'm a very big cheerleader for the city of Waukegan. You can find me at the beach a lot. I take a lot of photographs in the city. Uh, I take a lot of photographs of the sunrises at our gorgeous lakefront, and I attend a lot of events. When I'm not photographing the city of Waukegan, I'm also busy photographing events, uh, performances at Three Brothers Theater, which um, I'm a member of the board there. Three Brothers' current show, Anton and Show Business, just had took their show on the road and they had two sold out performances at the Shanty. The quality of the show, to me, rivals anything that's going on downtown. I do believe that this coming weekend is the last opportunity to see this all-female cast, so I encourage you to go to Three Brothers Theater and see Anton and Show Business. Um, when I'm not photographing those shows, I am also on the board of the Lake County Concert Association and I photograph their performances. I don't know if you're familiar with the Lake County Concert Association, but they are currently going into their 67th season. It started in the 1950s. And what their mission is, is to bring premier entertainment to Lake County so everybody has the opportunity to see high quality performances. These performances are all at the Orland Trap Auditorium at Brookside Campus. And we all know, or maybe you don't know, 
that the Orland Trap Auditorium is the largest auditorium in Lake County. And they just had all their seats done. So what I, my goal is tonight is to inform you that this is a fabulous organization. And when their mission is to bring top-notch entertainment to Lake County, they absolutely meet their mission. Even when I go to shows that I think, mm, I don't know if I'm really going to like this, I show up because I'm going to take photographs. And the shows are always awesome. Music, acting, dancing. So what I've brought here tonight is there's still three more shows in the 2018-2019 season. And I have tickets for all of you to the next show, which is Sunday, March 10th, to Vox Fortura. It's Sunday the 10th at 3, I do believe. So I've got tickets for, two tickets for each of you to attend the show. And I would love it if you don't feel that you can attend this show, that if you would give these tickets to a family or friend so that maybe they could attend. And if you need more information on the Lake County Concert Association, go on the web and take a look to see what the next few shows are after this show and what the 2020 season is. Thank you. Ooh, Thank you. Pavez Patel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mia Cunningham and uh, council members, thank you for uh, having an open house. Uh, I think a lot of people already mentioned this, but we want to just thank you for supporting the independent air testing. I am not a physician, my, my wife is a physician, and she keeps talking about the side effects of the pollutant air and the fact that you guys have taken the lead over our fellow communities like Gurney and others really shows strong leadership, so thank you for taking the lead. Uh, I'll just emphasize two things. One is, as I, others have mentioned, making it independent will be very important so people trust the numbers that come out. And then secondly, having a timeline that you guys can stick with will be great. But again, thank you for your leadership and thank you for really taking the lead in doing the independent air testing. So thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, Clyde McLemore. <coughs> Clyde, just give it to one air, pass it down. There you go. Mayor. Alderman, I come tonight on behalf of citizens of Waukegan. Alderman, did you know on February 6, 2019, a lawsuit against the city was filed by the mayor's mom? I have given each and one of you a copy of this suit. You read, you read on page three where it has the pillar states that the city acted with negligence. The definition of negligence is not fulfillment of duty. Now, as old mama said that, citizens of Waukegan, this family just amplified what I've been saying about all the cronyism and nepotism of the, our first Afro-American man is milking the city, and we are the victims. In this lawsuit, she's asked for $50,000 from the library, $50,000 from the city, and $50,000 from the Library Foundation. That's $150,000. Now, do you as citizens want to be victims to this scam? On Saturday of last week, we buried Dr. Mary Lacey. May God bless her soul. On Monday, February the 25th, Autumn Woman, Sylvia Bolden, sent and the mayor called the mayor's son with five questions concerning Mary Mission, because the auto woman from Aurora called, first of all, Mayor and auto woman. You was wrong, the family was still grieving their loss. Second, your job is to protect the citizens of Waukegan, not Aurora. Two days after the service, you actually asked the family, how would the building be brought up to code to avoid being shut down? Really? Then you asked, what is Mary's Mission Objective Program? Mary's Mission Program. Well, Uncle Bowman, you are an old woman. If you go out into the community, you would know what the mission was. 
If you stop by and visit, you'll see the place. Y'all are pitiful. Thank you. Thank you. Margaret Carrasco. Um, good evening. My words tonight are directed to agenda item, I believe, six or seven, and specifically pending property tax appeals before the Illinois Property Tax Board, in which the address um, is 200 North County. The owners are not in agreement, excuse me, the city, clarification, the city's not in agreement that the owners have requested a reduction in their property taxes, um, of, and so now you're going to vote on it. Well, well, well. So I thought it'd be interesting to select a few of the aldermen so our Waukegan taxpayers can see exactly how the game is played. Okay, um, here we go. We're going to start with Alderman Sylvia Bolton for the first ward. So um, her property taxes in her home had gone up to 4264 Guess what? They're down to $1,356. So while her neighbors are paying $4,000, she's only, um, her, she reduced to 2,908. She's only paying $1,356. Next, Alderman Seeger, second ward. Um, his taxes, he had gone up to 4,461 and you dropped down to 3,230, a, uh, a decrease of 1,231. Ward number three, Mr. Mozio, they're not taking care of you. Your taxes, actually, you were at um, 4,943, and you're up to 8,093. They almost went up $4,000. Next, I have Lisa May. Lisa May taxes went up also $432. I didn't have time to do everybody, sorry. Okay. We have Mr. Valco. Mr. Valco's on taxes also went increased $1,858. And we have Ward 9, Ann Taylor. She is paying $31,144 in property taxes. But wait, that's not the screamer. I went and thought it would be interesting for our taxpayers to see how much the Cunninghams are paying. <laughs> so um, I checked on 405 McKinley, which is um, under a different name now, but it's AKA Mary's house, okay? And they had gone up to 6,559, and they dropped down to 2,474, a decrease of $4,085. Isn't that nice? But drum roll, here we go. Mayor Sam Cunningham. I'm glad I'm standing right here in front of you. Okay, so um, your taxes had gone up to six thousand eighty seven. They Thank dropped you. five thousand dollars. Thank you, Margaret. Tatiana Santa Maria. Good evening, my name is Tatiana Santa Maria. I'm the resident of Re repeat uh, it. it was kind of low. What did you say? Uh, hello, my name is Tatiana Santa Maria. I am the resident of Gurney, Providence Village. Uh, I live also between uh, the Vantage and uh, the Madeline facilities. And I am here to uh, reiterate the need for independent air testing. And I'm actually grateful to you that you committed yourself right there during the first meeting on the spot to do it. Because so far, since November, when I found out the news about this ethylene oxide, as a, mother, as a mother of three children, I was doing my best on my own to save my children from the air that might be toxic. So I, on the days when the wind was blowing from east, I have been taking my kids away from this area to Vernon Hills and Buffalo Grove areas just for them not to breathe during daytime. And I pay uh, in about $14,000 in tax, uh, property taxes, so I should not be doing this as a citizen of this area. So I'm so happy that you committed yourself to this uh, testing, and I do believe that my children will be breathing healthy air soon. Thank you. Thank you. Ralph Peterson, Jr. Uh, 
As Mr. Peterson come up, first I want to say congratulations on your being honored as most influential African American. I think it was social service. Congratulations to you and your family, sir. Thank you, sir. That means a lot. I'm here tonight. Oh, to, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Peterson. You got to turn this way, sir. I. Uh, you know, let him. Let him. I let want to speak to. Uh, just before you start, can you stop, please? Can you stop? Uh, just to, for the record, I'm going to motion by Alderman Alderman, Alderman Moseville, second by Alderman Bolton to allow Mr. Peterson to uh, adjust the way our normal process is. All those in favor? Aye. Motion is passed and carried. All right, Mr. Peterson, go ahead. Time? Thank you. What's the time? 2.48. You have two minutes and 48 seconds, sir. Thank I you. I want to speak to not only the council, but I want to also speak to you, the audience. And I didn't want to be rude and turn my back to you guys. It was pretty nice when it was over there because I could look at the council and look at you. Uh, we're coming upon election time now. And I'm asking you people to understand that you're in control. Everyone that's sitting up here works for you. You don't work for them. And if they're not doing what you want them to do, vote them out. It's insanity to keep doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. And as you know, I shoot from the hip. I do not hesitate to say how I feel and what I mean. Now, you take Alderman Seeger. In my view, he's a waste of time. You never hear him even speak. I don't even know why he's even up there. He's of no value. Vote him out. We're coming up upon election. Stop letting these people do as they please. Mr. Mr. In my opinion, Mr. like I said, Mr. Peterson, Mr. Peterson, he's not, he's, 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 Mr. Peterson, he's not even aware. Mr. Peterson, did you stop? stop. The clock what's, what's, the, I did. what's the time, Mr. Peterson? You are electioneering, sir. We ask you, let Mr. S Mr. Peterson, you are electioneering, sir. So please, sir, we need for you. You can mention. You can. Uh, Miss. Yes, it is. M Mr. McLemore, you have had your time, sir. You will be escorted out. Hey. Thank you, sir. All right. All right, Mr. Peterson, we're asking you no electioneering. Time? 137. One minute and 37 seconds. Mr. Peterson. As I was saying, Alderman Seeger is a waste of time. You never hear him speak. Actually, He's a rubber stamp. He's just up there to be a yes man. Get rid of him. Mr. Peterson. His time is up. He really never should have been up there. He's up there for Mr. one Peterson. reason, to say yet. Yeah. Will you please quit interrupting me, sir? Well, sir, we're going to ask you no more electioneering, sir. Okay, and I'm going to ask you. you, sir, do not interrupt me again. Yes, sir. Now, Thank back you. to what I was saying, audience. You don't have to settle for this. You guys are the boss. Again, Seeger, I don't even know if he has a voice. Get rid of him. He's of no value. He has one purpose of being there, to say yes to the mayor. And that's it. We don't need him. In my opinion, he's in la-la land. He's not even aware of what's taking place. And point of order, sir, wow. please. Wow. I, we, I've suggested to you before, speak about As the mayor. As I was saying, he's in La La Land. Okay. We deserve better. Thank you. And until we stand up and start getting rid of these type of candidates, we're going to keep going through what we're going through. And I'm not afraid to come up here and tell you exactly how I feel. Thank you, sir. Is my time up? Nope. So quit interrupting me for the third time. Uh, I never interrupt so you, sir. Everybody understand what I said? Seeger needs to be re-evaluated. He's there for one reason, to agree with the mayor. Now, as far as the first ward, Alderman Sylvia, I'm willing to say you're following the path of Sam. Thank you, sir. 
Thank I'll you, speak sir. on you Thank next you. week. Next two weeks. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. That, that concludes audience time. Never do a dull moment. <laughs> All right, never do a dull moment. Uh, as always, we we do accept and ask that everybody speak their minds. That's the process in which we have in our in our country, uh, and uh, we're going to continue to do it that way. We will not change our process for that. We appreciate everybody <clears throat> adhering to the decorum of an open meeting. We appreciate it, and we just work in progress sometimes. <clears throat> it's okay. All right, next. Next on the will be proclamations and resolutions. A motion by Alderman Balco, second by Alderman Seeger, uh, proclaiming Illinois Rees Day, March 16, 2019. Any questions to the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Judiciary Committee. Mayor, real uh, quick. I'm sorry, uh, Alderman Villalobos. Uh, Mr. Terry McHugh's in the audience, uh, who's been working closely with this. Okay. Do you think we should give him a couple? Yeah, yeah come on you? up, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Thank you members of the council. I represent uh, Waukegan High School and Waukegan School District, and we want to invite everyone on the city council to Illinois Reads, uh, the Illinois Reads Book Festival on Saturday, March 16th. Uh, Illinois Reads is a statewide uh, reading encouragement program, and it is the kickoff event for a year of activities throughout the state of Illinois. 36 books are selected by 36 Illinois authors. This year, one of the authors is a native Waukeganite, and um, those, those books are promoted year long. Uh, right now, 24 of the authors will be appearing in person. We have another bunch of authors appearing via Skype. We've got 10 or 12 activities for the young ones. We've got exhibits. We've got all kinds of things going on to celebrate these authors. It's going to be a wonderful day, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you for the proclamation. I really, uh, on behalf of the school, I appreciate it. Oh, here, here we go. Well, I'll come down. And Your Honor, real, real yes, quick. Yes, sir. I know, I know Mr. McHugh very well. He works tireless, tirelessly uh, for literacy in the schools, and I know he's been working very hard on this uh, read, uh, what's it called, read, um, Illinois Reads, um, he's been working on this Illinois Reads forever, because uh, we've talked about it, and uh, we need to try to get as many people to participate in as we can. <coughs> All right, Alderman May. Right? Yep, Judiciary okay. Committee, thank you. Um, item A, the Judiciary Committee recommends a motion to approve zoning calendar number 2580, text amendment to zoning ordinance, redefining carport, defining car corral, and allowing car corral as a permitted obstruction in the rear yard, and I so move. A motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Villalobos. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Velka. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Aye. Okay, next item. The, the committee recommends to approve a resolution authorizing the mayor to bid $1 for a tax deed for 403 South Elmwood, 403 South Elmwood. 
Um, it's a dangerous building, nuisance property. Um, the plan for the city is to demolish the structure that's on, on the property. And I so move. Most of all, the main second by Alderman Seeger. How large is that lot? Yeah, How large is city lot? Yacht, city lot, Coach. Across from yeah. Mike's Pizza. Right across from Mike's Pizza, standard. Yeah. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Um, the next two items have to do with uh, the city is seeking nuisance abatement lawsuits against the owners of two properties that are uh, also nuisance properties. We're not looking to acquire the properties, but we're looking for a, a nuisance abatement and a declaration of abandonment so that we can uh, move forward with demolition. So the first item is item C, the committee recommends a resolution authorizing Corporation Council to prosecute a nuisance abatement lawsuit against the owners of 912 South Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue and seeking a declaration of abandonment against said property. And I so move. Uh, motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Bolton. Any questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Next item, item D, the committee recommends to approve a resolution authorizing Corporation Council to prosecute a nuisance abatement lawsuit against the owners of 721 Helmholtz Avenue and seeking a declaration of abandonment against said property in I so move. Motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Bolton. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. And the last item, item E. Um, this is an item for uh, PTAB pending uh, the property tax uh, assessment board interventions. There's three properties in the city of Waukegan where large appeals have been filed and the city is looking to intervene to be involved and have a say in the process. Um, these are all appeals that we're looking to lower the values of these uh, commercial properties for more than $100,000, which would have an effect on the rest of the city where they granted the appeals because that um, value would be then distributed amongst the rest of the taxpayers. So the committee recommends a resolution, and I don't know, do I have to read the extra property that we added? No. No, no, we should add in yeah, the, the yeah, actually, we okay. have a, another property. So the, the there. three property, there's two properties that were in our packet, 200 North County, 2105 South Lakeside Drive, and we're also adding 3050 North Lewis Avenue up in the seventh ward. Correct. Okay, and so the committee recommends a resolution authorizing Corporation Council to intervene in pending property tax assessment appeals before the Illinois Property Tax Appeal Board, and I so move. Motion by Alderman May, second by Alderman Taylor. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. That's all, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7, Public Safety. Alderman Mosio. Uh, yes, Your Honor, we have one item. Item A, motion authorize the proper city officials to adopt as presented an ordinance amending prohibited parking on North Avenue. That's up by Greenwood School, and I so move. Uh, motion by Alderman Mosio, second by Alderman Valco. Any questions to the motion? Correction, uh, I'm going to do Alderman Taylor. I'm oh, sorry, Alderman May as the yes. second. Any questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. All right. Old business. Uh, a resolution authorized sale of 1402 Washington Street. We're going to put that, uh, we're going to hold that over for another week. I'm well, sorry. No, we, I think we have to have a motion yeah, for yeah. reconsideration first. For 1402? 1402. It's 1402 Washington. I thought that was voted down. That was held held over, wasn't it? No. The, no. 
I wasn't at the last meeting. Maybe I'm. No, I think there was. I don't remember. Did we vote no, it down? No, I got. I don't think it came out of committee. That wasn't the one we voted down. We didn't vote that one down. We, we there were some other questions that were being asked. Then I apologize it came for out of my committee. error. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna look, we're gonna, we're holding that one over. Item A is gonna be held over, please. All right. Item B. Uh, Most by Alderman Bolton. Uh, a second by Alderman Tempest. Authorized resolution to authorize purchase of vacant property located at 415 West McKinley Avenue for neighborhood stabilization process, uh, purposes. Any questions to the motion? I Alderman, have. I have comments. Okay. You, um, you want to go, uh, Alderman May had some questions, then we go with your comments. Thank you, ma'am. Alderman May. Um, thank you. I, I guess I'm just looking for clarification why we would be purchasing a property. I believe the sales price that was presented to us was somewhere in the mid $50,000 range when a real estate investor approximately almost exactly a year ago bought it for $34,000. Um, and then we're going to demo it and then turn around and in, in the proposal that I received in my package to give it to these two neighbors. Um, I understand the want to get rid of nuisance properties. I uh, appreciate that when we're able to acquire these properties for a dollar and uh, resolve the unpaid taxes. I don't understand putting money in the pocket of an out-of-town investor or speculator, whatever he was, who bought this property and now did absolutely nothing. We're going to pay $20,000 more for it and then give it to two neighbors. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. I, we have a lot of properties we've demoed throughout the city. I have one in my ward that comes to mind. W would love to put it in the hands of the neighbors, but there's unpaid taxes on it. Are we gonna start purchasing properties and giving them to neighbors all over the city? Um, this is at 415 West McKinley. Um, I, 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 I need someone to explain to me why this makes any sense whatsoever and how, how do we proceed forward with the rest of the problems that we have in the city um, when, we, when we're not able to buy it for a dollar? How do we come up with spending this money on, on this particular property at 415 West McKinley? It doesn't make sense to me. All right, thank you. Alderman Bolton. Um, the feedback that I have, uh, first of all, we know our our job as aldermen is we're about urban renewal and, and it's also part of our job to bring stabilization to our ward. Now I know that 1701 Circle Court, we voted on that and agreed to that and that's 20,000 more than this particular property. So this is my concern at 415 McKinley there has been a murder, 16 year old, the house is constantly broken into, and there's, I've talked to the property manager, he indicates there's weapons been found and continually, there continue to be issues. And then when I look at the liability, what this is costing the city when it comes to gangs and, and drugs and murder and lives, I, I think there's no price that you can put on that. So I think we need to reevaluate and consider. I'd be happy to rebuttal. Alderman May. So 1701 Circle was built on a water line that the city owned and didn't realize was there, a completely different situation. We needed to clear that these people's house was falling into the ravine because our water line was underneath 1701 Circle. Completely different situation. We have distressed properties all over the city where crime and stuff is happening. I say, why aren't we enforcing with this out of town owner? Why aren't we putting the, put, putting the um, nails down to him for him to, uh, for him to bring his property up to code, for him to take care of this property that he purchased one year ago? I'm not putting a price on people's safety. We have these all over the city. This doesn't make sense to me at all. And, and the proposal is to give it to two neighbors. It's not lost on me, um, Alderman Bolton, that the next two properties on either side of it are both owned by the mayor. How do we explain this? Before you speak, ma'am, let's be clear. For you to suggest that this is happening because it's by the mayor's house? I no, didn't, no, no, I didn't suggest. You, I no, said no, no, your no, houses no, are on either excuse, side of this, this but deal. That's a suggestion. That's an inference. Whether you want to say it or not, that's an inference that is being happening because that's the mayor's house. That's what you're, that's, that's what you're alluding to, Alderman May. 
And I take issue with that. I really do. Whenever the decisions are being made up here, it's never because of the mayor or the alderman. It's for the best interest of the city of Waukee. So if you want to address those valid points that you had earlier, and I think Alderman Bolton you know, defended those points, but to bring me into it, I have nothing to do with that. I was, a I was the alderman for 18 years over there, and I lived by it. I didn't hear you say anything then. So why bring it, that it wasn't on our agenda to purchase it for twenty thousand more than we the put in twenty. We put in, 20, we put in over twenty-one thousand dollars community development block grant. <coughs> I didn't, there was no reason then. So to suggest that that's by the mayor's house is the reason we're moving forward. I think that's wrong. I think you should be moving. Why isn't why why should or why shouldn't we? Not because the mayor lives there. There was mayors who lived in various places throughout this community. We did things. So I personally take issue that you're saying it's because of the mayor. Well, I didn't say it's because well, of the mayor. That's, that's your interpretation of what I said. I'm just pointing out the facts of the matter. Well, the facts of the matter is that because I live or you live should not have any bearing on what we do up here as council. Do you agree with me, yes or no? That it shouldn't, I it, agree with that. Thank you. Yes. That, that's all. That's my point to you. To suggest because I live there is a it's an it's an inference that we're doing this because the mayor lives there. Call no. for the question. Yeah. Call for the question. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Uh, the motion is to. Real quick, I have one question. Okay. What fund are we going to purchase this from? Do we know? What fund? Uh, we'll probably it, it could be from it might be from the uh, building department I think building department building department okay uh, so the motion is to adopt resolution authorized to purchase a vacant property located at 415 West McKinley Avenue for neighborhood stabilization purposes there's motion by Alderman Bolton second by Alderman Tempest roll call please Alderman Villalobos nay Alderman Tempest aye Alderman May no Alderman Balco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. No. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mozio. Pass. The motion is passed and carried. Item number nine. Motion by Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Tabor, Taylor to approve vendor payments dated March the 4th, 2019, a total amount of $2,110,592.19. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman Bolton, to approve Comp Times cash payout dated March to 1, 2019, a total amount of $588.58. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Motion by Alderman Valco, second by Alderman uh, Seeger to approve PBOC holiday cash out payroll dated March, to, March 1, 2019, a total amount of $4,644.69. Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman mm. Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Motion is passed and carry. Item D. Uh, motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman Mozio, to approve regular payroll dated March 1, 2019, a total amount of $1,557,212.40. <coughs> Any questions to the motion? Roll call, please. Alderman Villalobos. Aye. Alderman Tempest. Aye. Alderman May. Aye. Alderman Valco. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Uh, motion is passed and carry. Item E. A motion by Alderman Mosio, second by Alderman Villalobos, to approve all raffle sales applic applications. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed and carry. Item 10. There being none. Item 11. All of this time. Madam Clerk. Alderman Villalobos. Yes, thank you. Um, 
Just a couple of things of note. Um, I had the opportunity to participate in my second meeting with the Family and Community Engagements uh, Strategic Planning uh, for that department. Um, we were able to set, we had a group of people there to help uh, strategize what the Family and Community Engagement Department is going to do. So um, I was part of a group that worked on some pillars about community partnerships. So we were able to make recommendations to the district um, on how to connect some partners and how to get some front facing aspects to get people informed and engaged. Um, so thank you to the, park, to the school district for allowing me to participate in that. Um, also, I got an opportunity to meet a new business. Well, not a new business, a standing business, actually. Um, there's a lot, I, the fourth ward has quite a few businesses, uh, Washington Street Corridor, Half a Grand Avenue, and downtown Waukegan. So um, I've met quite a few businesses in the ward, but this was when I hadn't actually had a time to, well, I hadn't made a visit. But uh, Horizon Benefits on Genesee Street, um, the woman that owns it, Carrie, um, she started this business from scratch and she's been at it for uh, about a decade or so. Um, it helps with individuals understand their benefit plans, um, so insurance and um, pensions and things of that nature. So I um, just want to make note and um, give thank you to Carrie for Horizon Benefits to, pay me a bit, to let me pay a visit and understand more what they do here in downtown Waukegan. Uh, also, I had the opportunity to do a first as well for um, Visit Lake County. Um, Visit Lake County does a lot of the tourism for Lake County. And I went to their quarterly forum, and it was held at the Shanty. Um, I had actually had never been to the Shanty, and they just had a giant renovation done there, I believe about $4 million expansion. Um, it was really amazing to see that space. I've driven past them many times, but never actually walked in the doors, and the, extent, the expansion of it is quite amazing. So I would recommend individuals who take a look at that and visit. Um, as Ms. Tracy Adams was mentioning, they partner with Three Brothers Theater. The Shanty is trying to get engaged, in the, is getting more engaged in the community. They do uh, culinary classes there for individuals. Um, it was just eye-opening to see how aspects outside of Waukegan, or even within Waukegan, are we trying to bring tourism to the county? Um, so it was a good thing to participate in and open my eyes on that. Um, I also had the opportunity to attend a Legacy Rancheri Foundation's um, awards recognition here. At, it was actually hosted here at City Hall. Um, Legacy Rancher Foundation uh, is a foundation that focuses on uh, reducing recidivism. And they had individuals that they were recognizing from the community that are doing leadership um, within the community, um, getting help in youth, um, being in politics, being um, active community members. Um, and they're basically focused on millennials. Um, or close to millennials, and so it was just a recognition to see some. Uh, there were some people on the that were recognized that I, I, I have no one to work with, um, and some new faces too. And it's always nice to see uh, all the vast amount of people that actually participate in the community and engage in it and work to strive it, working to strive to make it a better place for all of us. Um, so I just wanted to give him thank you for an invitation on that. Uh, and last but not least, the firefighters. I want to thank you, gentlemen. Um, the past two fires in the fourth ward were on very frigid days, today being one of them. And um, talking to the fire chief, I understand that it gets dangerous with all the ice accumulation that happens. Um, and so I want to thank you for those efforts. And then we, were, we had to bring in uh, mutual aid to aid us for that fire today. Um, and so for the firefighters, um, I think I thank you for coming up and speaking. Um, I don't. I, I find it uh, disappointing that we, had to, that we had to come to this place, actually, that we couldn't resolve our, our contract negotiations at this point in time. Um, but I do commend you gentlemen for saying what you need to say and getting this word out. Um, and so I will be looking more into this and seeing where we are in this contract negotiation, because again, this needs to get finalized. Clearly, you guys are an asset, um, particularly again, today's fire is, is an indicator of that. So thank you, gentlemen. That's all, thank you. Alderman Tempest. Yes. Alderman May. Thank you. So I, I agree with the mayor that we should be selling city-owned property and getting it on back onto the tax rolls and into the hands of you know into the ownership of taxpayers. I like that effort. It makes sense. It makes really good sense for us to dispose of properties that have no use to us. We have a lot of them throughout the pro throughout the city. It just doesn't make sense for us to own. Um, when we can uh, help a neighborhood by buying at a tax sale for a dollar, that makes sense too. 
Um, what doesn't make sense to me is that we had a real estate who, who I don't know who it is, uh, it's a real estate company from out of town, just made t more than $20,000 because we purchased a home he purchased a year ago, probably on speculation, and now we just, he just made a profit. We bought it for $20,000 more. We're gonna demolish it. And then according to the papers that I received as an alderman, they were going to give it to the two neighboring owners and they'll eventually get back on the tax rolls. But what a great deal for those two neighbors, right? And for that whole neighborhood. This is an awesome, this is awesome for that neighborhood. I agree. To get rid of that problem property and now these two neighbors um, have some extra space. They can get off street parking, whatever they want. That's, that's, that's a fantastic, that's a great winning situation for that neighborhood. But does anyone else have a problem property in their neighborhood, in their ward, somewhere that needs to be taken care of? Is this, is this gonna be the new norm? Are we gonna go out and pay real estate speculators profitable um, returns on properties that they buy, sit on for a year, don't do anything, and then we're gonna reward them. And then we're gonna reward whoever the lucky neighbors are on that property that we choose. What is the process for choosing these properties? Um, like I said, we demolished a house in the seventh ward, not 1701 Circle, which I'm just amazed um, that my colleague knew so much about, but it was built on a city water line that, that had everything to do with why we um, bought that house from those people. Um, I have another one, we, we demolished the house. The, the neighbors would love to own that property. They're willing to pay fair market value, but there's all kinds of back taxes paid on it. Well, I think he should solicit the city because look what we just did for these neighbors. It just, it just doesn't make sense to me. And so as long as I'm on the um, subject of property, we have a big property out at Fountain Square, 32 acres, okay? Most of you all know about it as the casino property, which is kind of really funny um, because there's no casino out there. When it comes time to dispose of this property, I want the citizens to make sure that you're paying attention, as well as my colleagues up here, because I'm sure I'll be gone by then. This is three more meetings after tonight for me. But there needs to be an RFP. If it's gonna be a casino, whether I'm for a casino or against a, a casino, this property needs to be properly marketed to the greater development community, and we should take in proposals to see who has the best deal, the best development, what makes the most sense for Waukegan. The people should have a word in this. We all should have a say on these 32 acres that we've been sitting on in our most, our highest tax producing corridor in the city. That 40, Route 43 corridor, that's what brings in money to the city of Waukegan. So when it comes time to dispose of 32 acres out at Fountain Square, I hope that there's gonna be competition that it's not just gonna be given to someone who's waiting in the wings for their sweet deal with the city of Waukegan. This needs to go out to an RFP. We need to be smart about how we approach selling the land that we own. That's all I have, thank you. Alderman Valco. Yes. Alderman Taylor. Uh, thank you, Alderman May. You said that so nicely that I couldn't agree with you more. Um, as you found out tonight, Ninth Ward pays some of the highest taxes, so I think that that's that's our money, and I think we want to make sure that we're really, really putting out this property so that we're getting the most for it, and that we're not giving it away below bid that what it, what the fair market value of it should be. I will further that. Thank you to the firefighters for coming tonight again in the Ninth Ward, where there is the most growth. We are with a jump station. I've been fighting this forever. We had, in 2005, we had a raise in the tax levy to fund that fire station. Now, through budget cuts, we've, we've stopped that. But now we have massive growth out there and we're still with three firefighters at that station. It doesn't make economic sense. Why do people want to come out there and put businesses out there when we don't have the fire and paramedic protection that we need? So that's been my fight. It will always be my fight. And as I've said publicly, it will be my last <coughs> breath. So thank you again for coming out. Um, I also want to 
thank uh, Mr. Nero for coming out and putting a meeting together between um, some of the people talking and our council. You know, I said this at Christmas time, respect works both ways, and we as leaders have to show that respect. I've seen a lot of anger. I've seen a lot of um, intimidation, a lot of bullying. I don't go for it. I'm sorry. We need to work together. We're one community, and we need to stick with each other. We've, all we've got, folks, we've got to stick with each other. We've got to be each other's backs. We are the city of Waukegan and we work for you. So let's make this happen. Let's get people talking. Let's get united. Because if we fall apart, we don't have a city, people. So let's come together and talk these issues out. But let's start here with our leaders and demonstrate that we can be respectful to you, and then you will be respectful to us. Thank you. Have a good evening. Alderman Bolton. Yes, I want to thank my peers, my other aldermen, for making their comments and with all respect. And I just want everyone to know I am definitely a team player. And my whole objective is um, I have been supportive in the first war, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And there was no opposition. So I'm just interested in just like supporting the other wards. I'm just looking for the same stabilization, needless to say, in the first ward, which is one of the worst wards. So I just want to say, first of all, I'm a team player, and I'm just looking here to help the city. Thank you. Alderman Seeger. Yes, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I just want to remind you on cold days and nights like this, please be careful. I just recently had a friend of mine retired policeman from city of Waukegan last week fall he took a big fall and shattered both kneecaps yesterday my son and I went to visit him all messed up it's going to take a while six months to a year before he's back up and walking so I remind all of you please he, he fell on black ice and it, it wasn't very nice. Uh, so be careful getting in and out of your car, leaving your house, going down the steps. Please be careful. It get, it's really slippery out there. Thank you very much, and everybody have a good evening. Thank you. Alderman Mosio. Motion to adjourn. Motion by Alderman Mosio. Second by Alderman Tempest to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion is passed and carried. Thank you.